constantly going through changes. Look at some important events that have changed the world and affected the lives of many people in modern times. The Unification of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia King Abdul Aziz, a gifted leader and dedicated warrior for the cause of Islam, was responsible for the legendary event that marked the beginning of modern Saudi Arabia. In 1902, he regained Riyadh, beat the city garrison, took the Masmak fortress, and established his headquarters in the city. He expanded Saudi Arabia to include all the Hijaz, Makkah, and Medina, and united all the tribes into one nation. On September 23, 1932, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was officially established as a unified Islamic state with Arabic as the national language and the Holy Quran as its constitution. King Abdul Aziz initiated the building of infrastructure and set Saudi Arabia on the road to modernization. The United Arab Emirates, UAE The Federation of the United Arab Emirates, known as UAE, consists of seven sheikdoms, Abu Dhabi, Ajman, Dubai, Fujairah, Ras al Khaimah, Sharjah, and Umm al Quwain. The city of Abu Dhabi in Abu Dhabi is the capital. UAE was officially established in 1971. It came after the discovery of enormous oil reserves in Abu Dhabi in 1958. The UAE dirham, a single national currency, was launched in 1973. The oil revenues, as well as income from other commercial activities, have been used to develop a thriving economy and social infrastructure. Abu Dhabi now hosts its own Grand Prix at Yas Marina Circuit, and Dubai is home to the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. The Space Race The Russians launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957. Next, Sputnik 2 went up into space on November 3rd. The Americans won the race to land on the moon more than 10 years later, with Apollo 11 on July 20th, 1969. This is one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind, said astronaut Neil Armstrong, the first person to walk on the moon. Sultan Salman Abdulaziz Al Saud flew on STS-51G Discovery in June 1985 as the representative of the Arab Satellite Communications Organization, Arabsat. He was the youngest person to fly on the space shuttle at the age of 28. The Communications Revolution the first communications satellite called Telstar was launched from Cape Canaveral on July 10, 1962. This marked the start of rapid transmission of TV signals over wide areas. What we take for granted today, satellite television, cellular telephones, wireless and high-speed internet connections, and so forth, were part of science fiction only 40 years ago. Teenagers today are the first real citizens of the digital world. Unlike their parents, they have grown up in a world in which electronic delivery of information and entertainment is natural and more accepted than conventional forms like the newspaper, tape, or film. Global Warming Poverty Security, fresh water, economy, endangered species, terrorism, pollution, diseases, unemployment, traffic, globalization, natural disasters, overpopulation, Global warming, global warming, poverty, poverty, 
security. Security. Fresh water. Fresh water. Economy. Economy. Endangered species. Endangered species. Terrorism. Terrorism. Pollution. Pollution. Dise diseases. Diseases. Unemployment. Unemployment. Traffic. Traffic. Globalization. Globalization. Natural disasters. Natural disasters. Overpopulation. Overpopulation. When was the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia established? It was officially established on September 23, 1932. What has changed as a result of the discovery of oil reserves in the Emirates? Revenue from the oil reserves has been used to develop a very successful economy and infrastructure. When was the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia established? It was officially established on September 23, 1932. What has changed as a result of the discovery of oil reserves in the Emirates? Revenue from the oil reserves has been used to develop a very successful economy and infrastructure. For centuries, people have made major changes in their lives. Many have moved to other countries in search of new lives. One of the great periods of immigration was between 1880 and 1920. At that time, 23 million immigrants arrived in the United States. Most of them came from poor towns and villages in southern and eastern Europe. They had one thing in common. They believed that in the United States, life was going to be better for them. It was the land of freedom and prosperity. Most of these immigrants were able to get just enough money to pay for the trip across the ocean by boat. Many arrived without any money to their names. Often the father of a family came first and found work. Then he sent for his wife and children. The trip across the ocean for poor immigrants was terrible. Men, women, and children stayed in crowded and smelly compartments deep down in the hold of the ship. They had no showers, and there were no dining rooms for them. They went up on deck to get food from huge pots. This was the price they had to pay to get to the new world. On their arrival in the United States, they saw the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. But they weren't free to enter America right away. When immigrants landed in New York, ferry boats took them to Ellis Island, where immigration officers questioned the new arrivals and doctors examined them. Those who failed the medical exam had to go back to their native countries. Sometimes, if a child was ill, the entire family had to return. Ellis Island became known as Heartbreak Island among immigrants. My mother was born in Riyadh. Where did you grow up? Mona is going to college in Qasim. Have you ever visited Europe? 
My mother was born in Riyadh. Where did you grow up? Mona is going to college in Qasim. Have you ever visited Europe? Tell me about yourself. I was born here in Berlin, but my family is from Leipzig, in what was East Germany. They moved over to the West soon after the German reunification. How about you? I'm from Dubai, but my grandparents were from Germany. In fact, they were from Berlin. So I guess you still have family here. I'm afraid we lost touch with our relatives. And how long have you been here? I've been here for almost three years. You see, I have a German passport because of my grandparents, so I can work legally in this country. By the way, what do you do? I'm a biologist. I do research in a lab for a pharmaceutical company. Do you miss Dubai? Quite a bit, but I've got a good job. I've made lots of friends. I fit in okay. I'm happy here. Tell me about yourself. I was born here in Berlin, but my family is from Leipzig, in what was East Germany. They moved over to the West soon after the German reunification. How about you? I'm from Dubai, but my grandparents were from Germany. In fact, they were from Berlin. So I guess you still have family here. I'm afraid we lost touch with our relatives. And how long have you been here? I've been here for almost three years. You see, I have a German passport because of my grandparents, so I can work legally in this country. By the way, what do you do? I'm a biologist. I do research in a lab for a pharmaceutical company. Do you miss Dubai? Quite a bit, but I've got a good job. I've made lots of friends. I fit in okay. I'm happy here. The Polish Rip Van Winkle Rip Van Winkle was a character in a short story by the American writer Washington Irving. In the story, Rip lived in a little town in the Hudson Valley in New York in the 1770s, around the time of the American Revolution. Rip went out hunting one day, took a nap under a tree, and fell asleep. He woke up 20 years later to find himself a citizen of a brand new country, the United States of America. Aïd Al-Bloui, 80, who had been in a coma for five years, woke up and was able to identify members of his family. The 80-year-old had not regained consciousness after surgery to remove a tumor in his head. While still in a coma, he had undergone treatment for one and a half years at the Tabuk Armed Forces Hospital. His family did not expect him to wake up when he did. Doctors believed that the treatment had a positive effect on his condition and helped him wake up. An Egyptian man, who had been in a coma for almost seven months, woke up and named the person who had shot him in the head. The man had been taken to the hospital seven months ago with a serious head injury and had slipped into a coma almost immediately. When he woke up, he lived long enough to tell the police that a barber named Mohammed had shot him. The barber was arrested and charged with murder. Polish railway worker Jan Grzebski, 65, went into a coma after he was hit by a train in 1988. He woke up 19 years later, in April 2007 into a world that had transformed itself from a communist regime where food lines were common to a world of Big Macs and cell phones. When I went into a coma, there was only tea and vinegar in the shops, meat was rationed, and there were long lines of cars at gas stations. Now there are so many goods in the shops, it makes my head spin. What amazes me today is that all these people walk around with their cell phones and never stop complaining. 
I have nothing to complain about, said Grzebski. At the time of the accident, Grzebski's doctors didn't give him long to live, but they were wrong. He survived thanks to the devoted care of his wife, Gertruda. She refused to believe the doctors and moved her husband's body every hour to prevent bed sores. It was Gertruda that saved me, and I'll never forget it, said Grzebski. Now he's getting to know his family, which has grown considerably since his accident. His four children are all married and have provided him with 11 grandchildren. How the Internet Has Changed the World It all started in 1969 when Klein, one of Professor Kleinrock's students in L.A., tried to log in remotely to a machine in Stanford. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee and Robert DeLeo introduced the World Wide Web. About 26 years later, 16 million people were online and email was taking over. Today, there are almost 2 billion users. Email, instant messaging, and video calls connect people across the globe. Social networks allow people to communicate with a large number of friends, and information is accessible to everyone online. All you need to do is Google a few keywords and you get numerous sites and documents. E-learning has made it possible for people to attend courses online and obtain academic and professional qualifications. How the Internet Has Changed the World it all started in 1969 when Klein, one of Professor Kleinrock's students in L.A., tried to log in remotely to a machine in Stanford. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee and Robert DeLeo introduced the World Wide Web. About 26 years later, 16 million people were online and email was taking over. Today, there are almost 2 billion users. Email, instant messaging, and video calls connect people across the globe. Social networks allow people to communicate with a large number of friends, and information is accessible to everyone online. All you need to do is Google a few keywords, and you get numerous sites and documents. E-learning has made it possible for people to attend courses online and obtain academic and professional qualifications.